Honorable Consul Media Education and Public Diplomacy at the Consulate General of India, Durban, Madam Kajri Biswas, Director of the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center, Dr. Chaitanya Prakash Yogi, Mr. Prabhudha Raha, Mr. Janardhan Ghosh, Ms. Debriya Dhat, Dr. Melissa Jinku, Ms. Sanjana Maharaj, Ms. Pooja Mansami, Mr. Session Bridge Mohan, Ms. Arya Prakash Chandra, Ms. Varishka Naika, Mr. Abhay Puran, Ms. Ayushi Sundar, colleagues, Ms. Kavita Sulanki, Ms. Cheryl Banwarilal, distinguished guests and audience members. It gives me great honor in welcoming you all to today's auspicious program on the birth celebrations of the great Rabindranath Tagore, also known as Rabindra Jayanti. Rabindranath Tagore was born on the 7th of May, 1861 in Calcutta, West Bengal, India. He started writing poetry from the tender age of eight, and at the age of 16, he released his first substantial poems. Tagore modernized Bengali art by summing up rigid classical forms and resisting linguistic restrictions. His novel stories, songs, dance, and various essays spoke to topics of political and personal behaviors. Gitanjali, Gora, and Gora Bare are best known works, and verse short stories and novels were acclaimed for their lyricism, colloquialism, naturalism, and unnatural contemplation. Rambindranath Tagore has taught us to explore inner creativity and to believe in ourselves, even when nobody else does, by expressing ourselves in writing, drawing, and shifting from what keeps us mundane. To explain today's topic, I have a favorite quote by Tagore Saab, and that is, everything comes to us to teach us that what belongs to us is if we create the capacity to receive it." Unquote. Without further ado, our first item on today's program is a poem recital by Dr. Melissa Jinku, a medical doctor who has studied at the University of Cape Town, South Africa. Dr. Melissa Jinku for her poem recital. Good morning, everyone. So today I'll be reciting a poem called Hard Times. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Music is silenced. The dark descending slowly has stripped the unending skies of all companions. Weariness grips your limbs and within the locked horizons dumbly rings the bells of hugely gathering fears. Still, oh bird. Sightless bird, not yet, not yet the time to furl your wings. It's not a melodious woodlands of leaps and falls, of an ocean's drowsy booming, not a grove bedecked with flowers, but a tumult flecked with foam. Where is the shore that stored your buds and leaves? Where the nest and the branches hold? Still, O oh bird. Oh, sightless bird, not yet, not yet the time to furl your wings. Stretching in front of you, the night's immensity hides the western hill where sleeps the distant sun. Still, with bated breath, the world is counting time and swimming across the shoreless dark. A crescent moon has thinly just appeared upon the dim horizon. But, oh, my bird, sightless bird, not yet, not yet the time to furl your wings. From the upper skies, stars with pointing fingers intently watch your course, and death's impatience lashes at you from the deeps in swirling waves, and sad intentries line further shores with hands outstretched and crooning, come, oh come. Still, O oh sightless bird, O oh sightless bird, not yet, not yet the time to furl your wings. All that is past, no 
the fears and loves and hopes, all that is lost, your words and lamentations, no longer yours a home, nor a bed composed of flowers, for wings are all you have, and the sky's broadening courtyard, and the dawn steeped in darkness, lacking all direction. Dear bird, my sightless bird, not yet, not yet the time to furl your wings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Melissa Jinku. It's something we can really learn from in these hard times. Our next poem recital is by Ms. Sanjana Maharaj, a grade 11 pupil at the Sea Tides Combined School here in Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa. Good morning, uh, I'm Sanjana and I'll be reading two poems with my country awake and endless time. Where the mind is without faith, and the head is held high, where knowledge is free. The wall, where the wall has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where Tyler striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habits, where the mind is led forward by thee into ever widening thought and action. Into that heaven of freedom, my father, let my country awake. Time is endless in thy hands, my Lord. There is none to count thy minutes. Days and nights pass, and ages bloom and fade like flowers. Thou knowest how to wait. Thy centuries follow each other, perfecting a small wild flower. We have no time to lose, and having no time, we must scramble for a chance. We are too poor to be late, and thus it is that time goes by, while I give it to every querulous man who claims it. And thine altar is empty of all offerings to the last. At the end of the day, I hasten in fear, lest thy gate be shut, but I find that yet there is. Thank you so much, Sanjana Ji. Our next poem recital is by Ms. Pooja Munsami, a final year student at the Durban University of Technology. Ms. Pooja Munsami. Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, my poem recital today will be A Hundred Years Hence. A Hundred Years Hence. Who is it with such curiosity? home a hundred years hence shall i be able to send you an iota of joy of this fresh spring morning the flower that blooms today the songs that the birds sing the glow of today's setting sun filled with my feelings of love yet for a moment open up the southern gate and take your seat at the window Look at the far horizon and visualize in your mind's eye. One day, a hundred years ago, a restless ecstasy slipped from the sky and touched the hearts of this world. The early spring, mad with joy, knew no bounds, spreading its restless wings the sudden breeze, carrying the scent of flowers pollen, all on a sudden noon. They colored the world with a glow a hundred years ago. That day a young poet kept awake with an excited heart filled with songs, so much ardor, anxious to express so many things, that buds of flowers straining to bloom one day a hundred years ago. A hundred years hence, what young poet sings songs in your poem? For him, I send my tidings of joy this spring. Let it echo for a moment in your spring, in your heart. Coming of the, the rustling of the leaves. 
Thank you so much, Pooja Ji, for that beautiful poem. Joining us live from India is Mr. Prabhudha Ra Raha to sing the song Ami Chini Go Chini Tamare by Rabindranath Tagore. Mr. Raha started his musical journey at the tender age of three. And by the age of 10, he started learning at the reputed Rabindra Sangeet Institution of Calcutta. He has also released many albums and participated on various TV channels, performing and teaching and conducting workshops for spreading Rabindra Sangeet and other genres of Bengali music across the globe. I present to you Mr. Prabhuda Raha. Uh, today we are here to celebrate the 159th birth anniversary of Tagore, perhaps the, the greatest uh, literary personality the country has ever produced you know? and uh, he was the first Asian to receive the Nobel Prize in 1913. Basically uh, today I will be singing a song, I will be singing in Bengali that's why just I will give you the background in a bit. You know like uh, Tagore had travelled across the globe basically delivering lectures and basically to pursue his dream by raising funds to create a university, Vishwabharati University in Shantiniketan, West Bengal, India. And this particular song has also been used by the greatest film personality, Sotajit Ray, in one of his films. Okay. And while traveling abroad, Tagore came across so many uh, uh, ladies who were very highly educated and very, very enlightened. And they had a very deep influence on Tagore. So uh, this, this particular song is dedicated to those foreign ladies who has influenced Tagore in a, in a, in a lot of ways, you know, right? So uh, let me sing this song. Ami chini go chini to maare Ogo mine chini Ami chini go chini to Mr. Raha, that was indeed a very beautiful, sweet, melodious song. 
Our next poem recital is by a UKZN student, Mr. Session Bridge Mohan. Mr. Session uh, Bridge Mohan is now going to present you with a poem. Namaste. My poem is titled Bird Story. The kid asks his mum, From where did I come? Me? Where did you find? Holding him tight in an embrace, in tears and laughter, the mum replies, You were in my mind, wish. You were with me when I was a child and played with my dolls. When worshipping Shiva in the morning, I made and unmade you every moment. You were with my deity on the altar, and with him I worshipped you too. You were in my hopes and desires. You were in my love and in the hearts of my mom and grandmom. I don't know how long you kept yourself hiding in our old age home, in the lap of the goddess of our family. When I bloomed like a flower in my youth, you were in me like its sweet smell. With your softness and sweetness, you were in my every limb. You are the darling of all gods. You are eternal, yet new. You are the same age as the morning sun. From a universal dream to me, you came floating on the clouds of joy that eternally flows in this world. Staring at you in wonder, I failed to unfold your mystery. How could one come only to me who belongs to all? Embracing your body with my body, you have come to this world as my kid. So I clasp you tightly in my breast and cry when you are away for a moment. I always remain in fear. I may lose one who is darling to the world. I don't know how shall I keep you binding in what magic bound. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sessionji. That's indeed a beautiful poem, especially with Mother's Day coming up on Sunday. Our next poem recital is by Ms. Arya Prakash Chandra, a grade 11 pupil at the Ashton International College in Palito, north of Durban. I present to you Ms. Arya Prakash Chandra for her poem recital. There. Today I recite poems named Cruel Kindness and Give Me Strength. I seek so many things with all my heart, have saved me denying all through my Thank you. this body the soul and this mind, saving me ever from too much craving. These great gifts you are making me fit. The way that leads to you. Sometimes I forget, sometimes I keep. But you are so cruel, from me you often step aside. This is but your kindness I know. Now you shove me away to take me later, making me fit for my union. This is my prayer to thee, my Lord, strike. Strike at the root of penury in my heart. Give me the strength lightly to bear my joys and sorrows. Give me the strength to make my love fruitful in service. Give me the strength never to disown the poor or bend my knees before insolent might. Trifles. And give me the strength to surrender my strength to thy will with love. Thank you, Arjaji, for that lovely poem. Our next poem recital is by UKZN student, Ms. Farishka Naidu. 
I present to you Ms. Varishka Naidu for her poem recital. Namaste. The poem of reciting is Clouds and Waves. Mother, the folk who live up in the clouds call out to me. We play from the time we awake till the day ends. We play with the golden dawn. We play with the silver moon. I ask, but how am I to get up to you? They answer, come to the edge of the earth, lift up your hands to the sky, and you will be taken up into the clouds. My mother is waiting for me at home, I say. How can I leave her and come? And they smile and float away. But I know a nicer game than that, mother. I shall be the cloud and you're the moon. I shall cover you with both my hands, and our housetop will be the blue sky. Who live in the waves, call out to me. We sing from morning till night, on and on we travel, and know not where we pass. I ask, but how am I to join you? They tell me, come to the edge of the shore and stand with your eyes tight shut, and you will be carried out upon the waves. I say, my mother always wants me home at the evening. How can I leave her and go? They smile, dance, and pass by. But I know a better game than that. I will be the waves, and you will be the strange shore. I shall roll on and on and on and break upon your lap with laughter. And no one in the world will know where we both are. Thank you. Thank you, Varishka ji. Your poem was really indeed sweet. Joining us live from India, is our next guest speaker, Mr. Janardhan Ghosh, for his remarks on the suspicion occasion. Mr. Ghosh is a researcher, director, playwright, and workshop consultant. He has performed in plays globally and has acted in feature films, soaps, serials, short films, web series, with the likes of Ajay Devgan, Abhay Diol, Badal Sirkar, just to name a few. I present to you Mr. Janadar Ghosh for his remarks. Namaskar. It's a pleasure to be a part of this wonderful program. And what a day to celebrate creativity. Because we are going to talk about a person who is the epitome of creativity. Tagore. It's a long time that Tagore was born. He had his creations when he was alive. It's more than 150 years. It's 159th birth anniversary. So all these years, how his creativity has inspired other creative people and how it is still pulsating in us. That is the little point that I would like to share from my perspective that how it is relevant now also. If you look at Tagore's own biography, initially Tagore would uh, uh, resist to write biographies, though he had written two, Jibon Shriti and Philabella. But he wrote to Padmini Mohan uh, Nyogi that he is not interested in writing uh, a biography because uh, his life is not that very interesting. Now that's very, that's a very interesting comment, I would rather say. A person like him saying that his life is not interesting. I think we need to de redefine the word interesting again. But later on, we see that he had been interacting with different sculptors, painters, writers and telling them to write about him, his experiences. Uh, we see that uh, he had uh, told Rani uh, Mohalunobish to write uh, about the experiences of his travel to Europe. But uh, Rani Mohalunobish said that it was not the right time and she didn't remember uh, most of the things that happened then. And so Tagore was disheartened and he often uh, 
uh, commented that most of my experience got lost because my accompaniments, they forgot what they had experienced. Again, in one occasion, uh, he said that, uh, what would the biographers write about me? Uh, how much of me have they seen, have they known? How much of the God? He himself says that, and it is true. I think it is true for all of us. If you stand in front of the gore, it's like standing in front of the Himalayas and looking at it. How much of the Himalayas can you see from the foothills? How much of it? So that is the question he asked. It's like seeing the big elephant like a blind person. All of us are true, but only the little is known. You must be knowing that story that a couple of blind people, they touch the elephant and they try to discover what the animal is like and somebody touches the ear and says that it's like a you know a fan somebody touches the leg and says it's like it's like a pillar and it's similar when we taste the little of tagore and we say oh this is tagore this is the man i have discovered but that's not all there's a lot and lot of things that is undiscovered so when you talk about creativity you need to get immersed in the God. You need to feel the God. It's like seeing with the word that you say. I have so many wonderful uh, recitations of his poem. When you recite, you dwell with those words. You actually bathe in those words. And when you bathe in those words, you feel the little of the God. And I think that little of the God inspires you, it ignites you. And you then move into the direction of creation again. And entire life while he was living, he had been inspiring different people. And he was witty, he was very, uh, uh, I would say, provoking for others. And they would move from Nandulal to other painters, uh, the sculptors, other poets, each one of them got that little touch of the God, and they were all ignited. So this ignition is available in Tagore's work, creating just to read through Tagore, might click something, and you are in that flow. It's like, you know, you have the river flowing, which is Tagore, and you have a small boat, and you feel like traveling, you just take the boat, and then there you are, flowing through the God, but not repeating the, the God. Because uh, if you see that just even, even at the fag end of the God's life, his uh, followers, like Buddha Boshu, Primindra Mitra, the poets, they wanted to refute his work. They wanted to be very, very controversial and said that, it's no more time for Tagore because they wanted to take a very, very new step, which is not at all influenced by Tagore. But you would be surprised that these people who actually negated Tagore in, in public platform will quickly go and learn all the Tagore poems, read because deep inside they knew that they are nourished by Tagore. They were nourished by Tagore. Even after, this was during the period of Kollul, that was known as Kollul Jug in Bangla, where these creative people, they felt that no, Tagore is too burdening. Everybody is talking about Tagore. And any other thing that is being created beyond Tagore is no more creation. So they revolted. Revolted. But, but, but what happened is that they, Actually, sheltered the integral to create something new. Even when you see Sunil Ganguly, a very famous Bengali poem, a poet, he writes, and he writes a very, very derogatory sentence. He said that with three kicks, I throw away the entire work of the God. He writes that. But later on, we see he is repeatedly talking about the God. And he's saying that particular line which I had written when I was young, 
is to show that I slept with Tagore. And when I slept with Tagore on my bed, my legs used to, when I was in sleep, my legs used to push those books and it fell. So it is no more metaphorical. It was literal kicking of those books which fell. So I mean, Tagore is always a part of that. So not only in this uh, uh, world of Bengali poems, Bengali films, or Bengali literature, but throughout the world, we find people getting inspired by Tagore's work to create. And Tagore has been a kind of a starting point for many. If you take uh, consider Satyaji Ray, his films we are very much influenced by Tagore. And if you see the literary influence in filmmaking, it started with Ray. And he was the first person in Bengali filmmakers' history who actually created a filmic idiom to represent literature. So after that, you find Ritwik Khoto. He has so many uh, Tagore songs in his film. And he felt that Tagore really expressed and showed that how creativity can be shaped or experienced. He showed that. So, in all these plethora of examples, we see that how he has touched all of us. During these lockdown days, when we are talking so much about no touch, no touch, no touch, we are talking about a person who has so deeply touched us, and we cannot avoid that touch. So this is a wonderful day to kind of reinvent the way to go of people like him masters like him, great personalities like him, can actually provoke creativity. The younger people whom I can see uh, here in the room, uh, it, it, they should actually feel, as I told you, they should actually experience it physically more, not only cerebrally, the works of these great artists. And you see, uh, Srishti was talking about Tagore painting, and you would be surprised that Tagore started painting after 60, when he was 60. So look, age is not a kind of uh, a boundary that would stop you from creativity. After 60, he starts painting. And remember, painting is a lot of, uh, painting means a lot of physical uh, involvement. And here, I think, that the gore surpassed all the physical limitations and went into the realms of creativity. He said that I am hopelessly entangled in the spell of these lines that are around me. So these lines with this drawing at the age of 60 and at and in the and being in the side, the worst side of 60, he starts creating it for 10 long years he is creating. So I think these stories, these small anecdotes, inspire us, help us, always make us live pulsate in the world of creativity. Uh, I think I'm done with the time. And one small little thing before I and uh, this uh, talk of mine, uh, Tagore says that when you create, you actually discover yourself. You actually go deep inside you like a deep sea diver and take out the precious thing that's hidden inside you. So I wish on this auspicious day, all of us are able to take out the little bit of that precious thing that is inside us through the Tagorean hook or through the Tagorean inspiration. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gosh, sir. Your remarks has definitely inspired us to be more creative and um, 
Thank you for bringing us this inspiring talk, not just through the medium of your remarks, but also through your pieces of work. We thank you. Our next poem recital is going to be a poem recited in Bengali by our South African scholar, um, our ICCR scholar, all the way in Goa, uh, Ms. Mikhaila Chetty, who is going to present her Bangla poem. Good morning. So today's poem is on the topic Prashno. Prashno, translated to English, means question. So it reads as Bhagwan, to me, Juge Juge Dor, Patiye Cho Bare Bare, Oya Heen, Chom Sare, Tara Bole Gelo, Oma Kora, Bole Gelo, Halo Vaso, Ontar Hote, Ditesh Bish, Nasha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mikaela Ji, for your Bangla poem. Our next uh, poem recital is by a pupil of the Westful Boys High, Mr. Abhay Puran. Mr. Abhay Puran is now going to recite his poem. Namaste. The poem I will be reciting today is titled The Banyan Tree. You shaggy headed banyan tree standing on the bank of the pond. Have you forgotten the little child? Like the birds that have nested on your branches and left you, do you not remember how he sat at the window and wondered at the tangle of your roots and plunged underground? The women would come to fold their jars in the pond, and your huge black wriggle on the water, like sleep struggling to wake up. Sunlight danced on the ripples like restless tiny shuttles weaving golden tapestry. Two ducks swam by the weedy margin above their shadows and the child would sit still and think. He longed to be the wind and blow through your resting branches, to be your shadow and lengthen with the day on the water, to be a bird and perch on your topmost twig and to float like those ducks among the weeds and the shadows. Thank you so much, Abhiji, for your poem. Our next poem recital is by a pupil of the Wistful Girls High School, Miss Ayushi Sundar. Hey everyone, the poem that I will be reciting today is My Friend Night on Thy Journey of Love, My Friend. The sky groans like one in despair. I have no sleep tonight. Ever and again, I open my door and look out on the darkness, my friend. I can see nothing before me. I wonder where lies thy path. By what dim shore of the ink blank river? By what far edge of the frowning forest? Through what mazy depth of gloom art thou threading thy course to come to me, my friend? Thank you. Thank you so much, Ayushiji, for your poem. Crossing over to India again, joining us live is Ms. Debpriya Dutt from India. She is a therapist and a mind body healer. Ms. Dutt is a recipient of the President of India's Gold Medal to a student in recognition for their overall performance. She is also the only Asian to receive the prestigious United Nations Aramis Mundus Scholarship in 2009. I present to you Ms. Deva Priya Dutta for her poem recital. Thank you so much for uh, giving me this wonderful opportunity to be a part of this program. I'm so privileged and so honored and uh, especially when it is something to do with our very beloved Tagore. I'm going to uh, recite two poems from Gitanjali. Uh, and as we are all aware, Gitanjali, which is popularly known as Song Offering, is uh, the collection of poems that won uh, Tagore the Nobel Prize in Literature. And uh, the reason why I selected two poems from here is because uh, this is something that's been very close to my heart. and. This poems from Gitanjali has literally shaped my way of being and uh, has changed my perspective towards life in a way that I can't even put down in words. So I'll begin with uh, poem number 102. I boasted among men that I had known you. They see your pictures in all works of mine. They come and ask me, who is he? I know not how to answer them. I say, 
indeed i cannot tell they blame me and they go away in scorn and you sit there smiling i put my tales of you into lasting songs the secret gushes out from my heart they come and ask me tell me all your meanings i know not how to answer them i say ah who knows what they mean they smile and go away in utter scorn and you sit there smiling now i shall uh, recite uh, poem number 96 from gitanjali when i go from hence let this be my parting word that what i have seen is unsurpassable i have tasted of the hidden honey of this lotus that expands on the ocean of light and thus am i blessed let this be my parting word in this playhouse of infinite forms i have had my play and here have i caught sight of him that is formless my whole body and my limbs have thrilled with his touch who is beyond touch and if the end comes here let it come let this be my parting word thank you so much once again thank you so much ms depriya that that was indeed really beautiful joining us all the way in durban south africa is my esteem colleague ms kavita solanki she is going to recite a song called eklo chala re sung by the renowned bollywood artist mr amitabh bachchan kavita ji for her song rendition thank you shishti namaskar everyone I don't know the Bengali, but I'm trying. Tore jodi tore dakshone ko na she to be ekla chalo re. Jodi tore dakshone ko na she to be ekla chalo re. To be ekla chalo, ekla chalo, ekla chalo, ekla chalo re. तो बे एकला चलो एकला चलो एकला चलो एकला चलो रे जोदी कोई कथा नो कोए अरे ओ कोई को था ना कोई जो दिशोबाए था के मुख फेराए शोबाए गोरे भोए जो दिशोबाए था के मुख फेराए शोबाए गोरे भोए तो वे परान खोले तो वे परान खोले और तो ये मुख फूटे तो रे मोनेरे को था एक लबोलो रे मुख फुटे तोर मन कथा एक बोलो रे जो तोर दक्षिण के नाशे तो बे एक चलो रे जो तोर दक्षिण को नाशे तो बे एक चलो रे जब खाली घटा छाए रे ओ अंधेरा सच को निगल जाए जब दुनिया सारी डर के आगे सरप ना झुकाए जब दुनिया सारी डर के आगे सरप ना झुकाए तू शोला बन जा वो शोला बन जा जो खुद जल के जहां को रोशन कर दिए एक जलो रे जो खुद जल के जहां को रोशन कर दे एक जलो रे जो दी तो दक्षिण को नाशे तो बे एक चलो रे जो दी तो दक्षिण को नाशे तो बे एक चलो रे जो दी तो दक्षिण को नाशे तो बे एकला चलो रे थैंक यू धन्यवाद 
Thank you so much, Kavita Ji, for that really sweet song. I've heard you sing in Hindi, but this is also really, really beautiful. Thank you. Um, we've come to the end of our program, and no program is completed without concluding remarks. For our concluding remarks today, we are going to have our council media, uh, Ms. Kajri Biswas, at the... Uh, Ma'am is the Council of Media and uh, Education and Public Diplomacy at the Council General of India in Durban. Okay, so I now present to you Madam Kajri Biswas for her remarks. Well, you know, thank you to all the speakers for joining us all the way from India. And uh, thank you to Dr. Yogi and Mr. Piyush for making this possible. Um, every year, we get together to pay tribute to Rabindranath Tagore, or as we know him in uh, West Bengal, Kobi Guru, Rabindranath Thakur. Um, if I were to talk about what he means to me and the millions of Indians spread over all over the world and in India, um, it would be that perhaps we can't put a finger on it. He's a part of our lives in a way that over the years and years of time that have passaged since when he was alive and writing and being criticized and writing back and contributing to the world around him in so many ways, absorbing ideas from all over the world, from our ancient traditions of Indian culture, Indian history, and sending it all back to us, his vision, his philosophy, of life, of humanism, nationalism, internationalism, on education, creativity, spirituality, and the list can go on and on and on. Uh, I think his philosophy and his works have permeated into every walk of life in ways that we hardly notice these days. The way you would see people dressing in world today, speaking, the language that we speak, our aesthetics, a lot of it is something that he has passed on to us. And what he has passed on to us is his distillation of ancient Indian culture, Bengali and Indian renaissance, to the Indian independence movement and how it shaped his idea of nationalism, and how he never feared to express his honest opinion. He was the first one to stand up and criticize giants, be it the entire empire of the British Empire when he renounced his knighthood to protest the massacre at Jallianwala Bagh, or to criticize what he felt were backward pulling tendencies of his own culture our own culture. And he has always been very, very vocal and upright and forthright. And that is something which is obvious through his writings when we read them now that he speaks to us directly no more. And I have seen it through the way it's influenced my parents and my elders around me when they would quote his poems, his stories, and pass on the lessons, the philosophy in each and every of his writings. And that is how I was once asked by a friend who was not Bengali, what does Tagore mean to you? And I said, probably he's like a saint who shows me the way, who gives me messages of hope and courage. The song that Kavita Ji sang for us says exactly that. Have courage and move on. Be honest with your ideals. And hold up the light of truth in the darkest hours of darkness. So that is what Rabindranath Tagore and his philosophy means for me. Of course, as um, um, Mr. Janardhan Ghosh was telling us that 
he has also continued to inspire generations and generations of modern Bengali writers in a way that they also would love to have overthrown the yoke of influence and done something different. But when Tagore, in his last few years of creativity, had also himself said that I wish there was a writer who would denounce me and repudiate me and move ahead from what I have done. And that is that spirit of uh, yearning for modern creativity. And even when he was inspired by tradition, he always looked forward. And that is something that is perhaps the most important message for, I think, everyone. Start of fresh. Like he started painting at a very old age, and there's no nothing wrong in criticizing what is revered and worshipped as a canon, and at the same time, finally succumbing to its charms and maturing and moving ahead. And that is perhaps why, even though a lot of his language. Uh, at times when I read his books and writings, it seems very fake, but when you read deep into the message, you realize how modern it is, how fresh it is and relevant it is even today. And that is perhaps the hallmark of any great literature. We are very lucky that he was discovered by the Western world and was given a Nobel laureate, which is when he got to travel all over the world and people got to understand so much about his writings, which became very, very popular. And we don't even know the extent of popularity that he achieved at that time. I was posted in Cairo. And when we conducted a Rabindra Jayanti celebration in Egypt, the number of famous Arab poets from Egypt who came forward and spoke about how they spent their college youth days reading Tagore's poems in translation and being inspired and feeling this immense awe at the depth of Indian philosophy and culture. And we should be very grateful and uh, feel very lucky that uh, Tagore got to reach out because when he was writing, it was an era of not social media, like everything that is published or you know filmed or photographed reaches out to billions and billions of viewers immediately. Uh, readership spread very slowly, and it was largely a niche of only the educated few who could read, who were literate, and that too in English, or for in the context of Tagore and Bengali. And uh, that his message has spread of peace and love and fearless bravery in the face of opposition. It's something that it's a heritage of uh, Indian culture that we should always be very proud of. And the opportunity that we get yeah, to celebrate his contribution to not only art and literature, but also culture is something that cannot be overstated. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Madam Kajri Biswas. That's Madam Kajri Biswas, our Council for Media, Education and Public Diplomacy at the Consulate General of India, Durban, here in South Africa. To render the vote of thanks for today's program, I would like to call upon my esteemed colleague at the Swami Vivekananda Cultural Center at the Consulate General of India in Durban, Ms. Cheryl Banwari Lal, for the vote of thanks. On behalf of the Swami Vivekananda Culture at the Consul General of India in Durban, I wish to express our deep gratitude and thank you to Dr. Meliska Jinku, Ms. Sanjana Maharaj, Ms. Pooja Munsami, Mr. Session Bridgemohan, Ms. Arya Prakash Chandra, Ms. Varisha Naidu, Mr. Abe Puran, Ms. Deba Priya Dutt, Ms. Ayushi Sundar and Mrs. Ms. Michaela Chetty for those wonderful poetry recitals. I would like to say a huge thank you to Mr. Prabhupada Raha for that wonderful music. 
I would like to express our deep gratitude and thank you to our guest speaker, Mr. Janardhan Ghosh, for sharing your knowledge and taking time of your busy schedule to join us today. I would like to say a huge thank you to Madam Kadri Paswas for the concluding remarks and thank you for taking time of your busy schedule to join us, ma'am. I would like to give a special mention and express deep gratitude to Mr. Kamal Maharaj, the CEO and founder of Vishra Shakti, Mrs. Jyoti Singh, the Deputy Principal of Sastri College, Ms. Fareka Sukhan, the Hindi teacher for assistance with the students. I would like to say a huge thank you to Mr. Arindam Mukherjee from Kolkata, India, for assisting us with our guest speaker, singer, and Echo Cutinist from India. I would like to say a huge thank you to Ms. Kavita Solanki and Ms. Shisti Harinarayan for being our lovely MC. I would like to say a huge thank you to Mr. Piyush Kandawar for all the technical support and making all our online programs a success. Stay home and stay safe. Thank you. <laughs>